Yo, 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 it's me, I. <laughs> I am. Hi. Uh, I, I did a video previously and I just took my medication, so I'll be a bit high today. Unless the medication's already working. I mean, I took it uh, like an hour ago, so maybe it's working already. Who knows? I mean, we were playing Lotus Reverie and we're doing the main events. I think I'll do for. I'll play for one hour. So let's go. Uh, I think I'll do. Photograph! Because there's Columbine! I love Columbine so much. I was saying, just in time. I was already getting bored. You come across Fennel and Columbine. They probably weren't enjoying each other's company since they both approached you at the moment you entered the hall. I found this. It's a camera that both digital and Polaroid at the same time. Pretty cool. That's Rose's camera. Though, she, has a very, she was very annoying about it. The girl just loves to be in the center of attention. I already checked through the photos stored in the camera's memory and she was very annoying indeed. Fennel comes up to you and stands on the tiptoes to curiously look at the pictures on the small screen. The two of you scroll through the pictures one by one. They all depict happy moments between the different members of the castle. It doesn't seem like the daily life in the castle has changed much since I arrived. Do you think so? Fennel continues staring at the pictures. Her tone of voice is lazy but wary. Most of the people in the photos are not here anymore. You know their destiny very well. The same is true for those two. Their last moments were very different from the moments captured on the screen. Although, for what it's worth, you are determined to change that perception. Eh? I don't know any about anything else, but we always have some nonsense or other going on in this castle. You only have to make one lap around the place and I'm sure something will happen. Come on, let's add a few more photos. I guarantee that with me here, Rose won't come around and hog the camera. Ah, this is a bit embarrassing. You follow me everywhere and now you're staying away? It's just... Stay away, fiend. You are not Columbine. Huh? Don't be silly. I'm just joking. Come here. You grab Columbine and wrap your arm around her shoulder. You then flip the camera and prepare for a selfie with a big smile. That... That was too intense for my heart. <laughs> Once with that face, it looks like you were about to pass out. Once with those peace hand gestures. No, I didn't expect this. You... You were the serious silent type. That was a critical hit. I don't know where that came from and I'm not complaining, but what a sudden change. Columbine is the late last person to ever complain about sudden changes, but her words catch Fennel's attention. Sink? Being serious? I would love to see that. I've changed that much. I was just trying to have some fun. I don't... You lower your head with a gloomy expression. They're just photos, Zing. Don't take them too seriously. You don't have to imitate them. But they are very nice, aren't they? Even if you don't say everything about us, they are at least something. I've always wondered what I needed to do, but I've never stopped to observe the moment properly. You just want the excuse to try out this little gadget, am I wrong? There's also that, sure. What else can I do? I suppose it's babysitting time. What do you want to take pictures of? As long as you let me stay on the sidelines, he. <laughs> Apparently those two somehow decided to follow you around. You would never say, you've never imagined such a sight. Oh well, this means you have something to occupy your time. Time to only to take a few pictures. You walk through the castle's beautiful courtyard. The flowers, the trees, and the magnificent building are all perfect for a photo shoot. Hmm? 
What's that? A tranquil library, all while a gentle breeze blows. The interplay of light and shadow in the hallways while observing the outside melancholy. I think that was Rose, wasn't it? She was taking a picture of us? The beautiful diva and all her glory naturally appearing in the photo, ahem. <laughs> ah, didn't they hear me? The steam and smells of the kitchen while preparing ingredients for cooking. A scene as common as it is comforting. Ah, uh, my lovely salad. Why are you all so funny? It is a perfect occasion to save this instant forever. Put a watermark on it and... Hey! A soft burbling of the river in the distance accompanied by the view often from the walls. What awaits us beyond the horizon? The girl wondered to herself, her eyes stoic. Her beautiful eyes deserve to be preserved forever in the drawings of... You really did take a ton of pictures. H hey! Yes, I think this is enough. We successfully took photos of both the places and the people of in their natural state. Are you sure? Aren't you forgetting someone? But I'm missing someone. Finally, it's my time to shut. There, in the courtyard. What do you mean? Ah! What is a normal day for you, Columbine? Columbine's jaw drops. Her eyes silently darting between your foot, the edge of the wall, and Rosemary sweated at the wall's base. You play dumb. Nothing happened here. I don't know. My life is nothing special. Isn't there anything that makes you happy? Let's forget the stocking business. That running gag has gotten extremely stale by now. Huh? I don't know. Maybe taking a walk and... Listening to music? Oh yeah, I think I've seen you with headphones before. <laughs> Everyone says I have a terrible taste in music, but it's special to me. I had some previous musical background, but I discovered some new genres here in the castle. The incident has limited what we can do in certain areas, so with so much free time, well... Gotcha. See, you can smile for more things than you might expect. S sink? The incident may not have given you many options, but that won't stop us from living our days however we want. And now I have proof. What do you think? Sink? Ah... The days I want. You're right. Can I keep the picture? The one I just took? No, the one with both of us together. You nod and hand the picture over to the girl. She clutches it with love. Though you decide against asking ex exactly why she wants it. Didn't you want more pictures? Let's go. The three of you keep walking around the castle, and you take photos of everything and everyone. Or well, almost everyone. You've had more than enough fun for one day, and finally decide to end it here. Thank you, Sink. Anna. <laughs> that was better than I expected. The girl leaves with a dark and sinister grin on her face, but by now you've learned that what those smiles actually mean. That was good, Sink. Are you satisfied now? No, now you mention it, there's one last place I need to photograph. Do you mind coming with me? What place? The most important! How could they ever forget the, the view from the tower keep? The monolith is impressive and Pan will take a moment to watch it. The discreet silhouette and tacit face of hers. This is perfect moment to say this unusual side of the girl. Hmm? She didn't appear in the picture. Let's see. Don't mo- Huh? Fat. Aha! This time you won't deceive me. Hey, the door's stuck. Hey! This time. Ah, you got me naked, hermit. <laughs> I hate you, Ugu. <laughs> now, for sure. Halt! Pata police! You're under arrest for crimes against intimacy. It is true you took a picture of the naked gold pata? You know how many points that's worth? It's super rare! 
But if you pay the bribe... <laughs> Fennel? Do you have a problem with appearing in my pictures? N no What are you saying? You've been avoiding getting photographed from the very beginning. What's wrong? Absolutely nothing is wrong. Are you done yet? If so, let's go. You know perfectly well that I brought you here so that I wouldn't run away. You fell from my trap. Hey, hey, don't get cocky. If I wanted it, I... Come on, the photograph itself is irrelevant. I just want to know what's up. The girl bows her head, looking tired. Do you really want me to talk about that right now? You nod firmly. The girl pauses for a few seconds, unsure from where to start. You already know about my fame, all that heroin business. As you can imagine, people have taken many pictures of me throughout my entire life. But I never really knew what they were for. They all felt fake. From my point of view, the person in the picture and I were two different entities. Is it some kind of trauma? No, I wouldn't take it that far. It's more like a feeling of abandonment and neglect. A picture is a perfect moment in time, but it lacks context. From what, what people see with their own eyes is very different from what's in the photo. And if the contradiction is too big, I... The girl seems distraught, her hand pressed on her chest. She looks out over the city, to the monolith. The wind begins to rise around you, and her hair flutters over her face. I didn't expect you to understand it, but I didn't you go around taking all those photos for the same reason? Fennel turns in the direction, pointing to the camera. You wanted to capture daily life in the castle, but if someone else views those photos, they won't be able to understand your intention. No one will ever feel what you felt. A group of survivors trapped in the end of the world, living day by day trying to smile despite the difficulties. Those words mean nothing by themselves. Those pictures don't even come close to what you went through. Not even a book with a thousand of words could discern what constitutes your life here. Not even I can do that. And I'm here in person trying to understand how you feel. Even if it's more comparable, as long as it's an approximation, time will only warp what perception more and more. We know that very well from the history. Like the stuff the old man rambles about. Are you talking about Thistle? What do you mean? Those who cannot learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Damn sentence, right? Everyone knows it. And yet I consider it so unfortunate. Our perspective of history is built on the few headlines that survive. But that ignores what the day were days were truly like. No one can know everything, and it's perfectly normal for us to transform the information with our bias. But then why recite the warning not to repeat history? Where does this fatal e arrogance come from? Just speak about history as if something could objectively be considered an error. Why base your knowledge on the authority of another person, one who is unaware of the infinite context? Don't reduce it down to errors. Ask yourself, what could have happened if you were the one writing what they wrote? Thinking what they thought, killing who they killed. We all should be able to feel the same. We are all humans. Even myself. The girl smiles, the look on her face completely contradict a complete contradiction to the tone of her words. A photograph is perfect, but it will never capture the heart of the moment. Only your memories can perform such tasks. Even though they are also part of your least reliable possession. Ironic, don't you think? But, but I have no memories, Fennel. Nothing but loose images without rhyme or reason. I don't know who I am. What's the problem with using what I do have as long as it helps me get closer to something? Sink, you've previously talked about looking for what makes you happy. How did that work for you? Do you really think that this fake instant of empathy when you check a picture of someone else will really make you happy? I... You take a moment to check the camera in your hands. No, but I don't think happiness is all there is. Fennel opens her eyes wide. She moves closer to you, her voice curious. You've taken photos, but they're not enough, right? Save the world, find love, form family, become someone. 
children make an impact, be remembered. And then, what do you want from your memories, from your own life? The girl stands on the tiptoes next to you, grabbing your robe. Are you gonna let the peace of the castle devour you? Are you gonna let abandon everything for your own happiness? What's your true wish, Sink? Time stops and does and as does your breathing. Fennel seems determined to get an answer from you, but how can you answer that? Your intentions were innocent. You just wanted to take a picture, nothing else. The girl realizes this, so she releases you and playfully taunts you but the way she loves so much. Haha, <laughs> look at you. I love you dumbstruck. Perfect chance to get away. You didn't even realize how I slowly made my way to the exit, little by little. Fennel 1, 6 zero. <laughs> You'll never take my picture. The girl waves goodbye and laughs on her way out. You want to follow her, but you don't have the strength. This goal is well beyond a simple picture. You know it. Several hours later in the hall, you see Fennel sleeping defensively on the sofa. It wasn't that difficult. Her plastic curled up figure instantly takes shape on the camera screen. It's adorable, and that alone negates anything from that previous conversation. Don't worry, I'll keep this one for myself. And well, where's Rose? I don't get want her getting angry after I just teased her a bit. You put the physical photo in your photo and delete the original copy in the camera. Better not leave any evidence. And you look over at Fennel again, still peacefully sleeping without noticing a thing. After saving the world and achieving everything, what else is left for the heroine to dream of? My efforts still felt childish. Bam, 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 bam. I think I'm slowly cooling down. Like, I'm, I have cooled down from my high from not taking meds. So I'm back to normal, I guess. Back to the calm, collected, cool, cool, very cool me. Ooh, so cool. Mm. Another investigation. I guess we can do that. No, I have not encountered anyone with that name since the incident. You don't look very convinced. Well, I've run into a lot of people. It's only normal I have to crack my brain. That name sounds vaguely familiar. Like I've heard it before, but I've got nothing beyond that. Ah, but then you may know someone who does know who I'm talking about. Indirectly, eh... Uh... shakes her head and raises a suspicious eyebrow. If I knew someone like that, I'm afraid it's too late now. But I have the feeling that's not what you wanted to ask. Me? No, girl. Who do you take me for? You can drop the subtlety, Rose. Out of everyone here, I have the least idea why there was an odd number of people in this castle until I arrived. Unless you're hiding someone. We all think the same. All I did was highlight something you already mentioned before. Fennel bends her head, somehow fascinated. It's hard for me to stay see where you're trying to go here. Can you go to the point and just uh, say outright what you've been thinking from the beginning? I would tell you that you are overestimating me, but it is true that I'm amazing. Why should I lie about that? What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, I have no idea. I feel like I just walked into a conversation and I shouldn't be even listening to this. Let's see, we know that thanks to that time limit, it's impossible for two of us to go long without engaging in combat. That would rule out any relationship between you and any of us. Unless you're connected to someone who has only just arrived, right, Sink? A chill runs on your spine the moment Rose calls your name, forcing you to come out and greet them, still startled. It's not like you were intending to eavesdrop, it's just difficult to find the right time to come forth. Cold, cold, but I don't blame you. I'm sure that's every what everyone's thinking. I was just testing you. It's not what I personally believe. I mean, you made it here immediately after we lost two of our own, and 
You did it so while well, activating every alarm on the premises. Why test the waters first, then come and proclaim you just want to play along and take it easy? If you are trying to look as suspicious as possible, you've absolutely succeeded, but that would be too much. In addition, there is no way you could come ac across the river without me finding out. Your systems could fail. Fortunately for me, that's impossible. But it didn't that happen once before. I actually lived through that power outage while I was on the other side of the city, although it only lasted a second. Rose doesn't take well to this offense, actually answering seriously. Hey, I was trying to support your case, wasn't I? You're stepping on that mine of your own volition. Huh? <laughs> but aren't you the scientist here? You must doubt everything, and even I'm curious about that power outage. I couldn't care less about what others think. Rose flares her nostrils on the verge of losing her patience. She turns to you, requesting help with a large, fake smile. We've already resolved that. Sync was with me. She can confirm. Yeah, more or less. It was just... It's likely it was just bad luck. More or less? You can be quite funny sometimes, Sync. I can see you coming a mile away. That's as if bad luck even exists in a place like this. What happened to your curiosity? I'm sure you didn't even bother conducting any interrogations. Fennel gets her answer just looking at your faces. I don't know about you girls, but now I really want to know how that power outage happened. Hold on, Fennel. I don't think we'll gain anything from this, especially since we've already closed that investigation. It wasn't anyone from this castle. You really don't suspect anyone? Or is it that you don't want to suspect anyone? What do you mean? Oh, nothing. Didn't you come to the castle the very same day as the power outage? You are well informed. Then, I don't understand why you're not searching like crazy for concrete answers. Come on, I'll lend you a hand. Let's split up and ask everyone in the castle what they were doing at that time. Don't presume I've already accepted your idea, and why split up? Because if we go together, we'll only get one testimony per head. Separated, we'll obtain two, making it easier to find contradictions. We can apply more pressure this way too. You know, good cop and bad cop. I'm starting to suspect that you just want an excuse to play around. Although I'm pretty sure who's the witch cop here. See, I got it all figured out. Rose, we'll continue our conversation once we're done. Not like there's anything else to say. But yeah, let me know how the counseling goes. Not like you're gonna get very far, but... Come on, look. I've already got you convinced. Rose just sighs and looks away. Time for interrogations. Who should I ask first? Oh, Columbine always first. My lady, my lady. Tips for Dora, my lady. I was. I was. Columbine goes through several funny faces, unable to remember clearly. I suppose I spent most of the day in my room and then went to patrol the walls. You suppose? Until you arrived, I didn't have much to do. So the days were mostly blurred together. Not sure if I should feel flattered or worried. Shortly after the breakout, I got a call from Thistle on one of the telephones on the internal line, asking me to stay on watch. And so I did, for almost the entire night. Helio didn't realize it, but from the walls, I saw the entire sequence of events surrounding how I discovered you. Then I had to vote on whether to let you stay. I'm happy I said yes. It still amazes me that you voted you was when you when at first you well I hated you. Not sure if that was exact hate exactly, but yes. <laughs> the truth is I just didn't want to be the one deciding if you were to stay or not. It's as simple as that. If that happened, it would have been too much of a responsibility and some may have turned against me for sure. The difference between yes and no is that yes, being positive will inherently make you look good, and you can always explain yourself later. And no, on the other hand, let's just say I'd rather remain unnoticed. I know, I know, I think I've realized what happens when you try to go unnoticed though. That's destiny. Columbine shrugs, her voice slightly muffled. I imagine nothing suspicious happened during the old patrol or when the lights went out. 
not a single cricket in the entire city and visibility was limited, so... Ah, about my theory. Theory? Remember? At first I thought it was possible someone could have caused a power outage in order to attack someone in the middle of the night. Oh, yes, that. You told me that they attacked a Dova that would explain that nobody was hurt. Exactly. Now I have my doubts about it, though. Care to explain? Eh, I'm not sure. But if the culprit was trying to discover someone's identity, I think they could have done a far better job. Maybe take advantage of our bedtime to know everyone's exact locations? The castle is just too large to go around trying to look for a random victim. It's always possible they knew exactly where the chosen victim would be. Yes, but are you gonna risk wasting your only opportunity on a situation where you think you know where your victim may be? If the lights go out, it's obvious no one's gonna stand around one place. If I was the attacker, I thought I would convince someone to stay still without looking suspicious. Looking at it that way, it certainly seems like there's no legi legitimate motive for the power outage. That's the main support being it being an accident. My theory would have made more sense if something had happened after the power outage. If someone were to disappear, some duel. Sure, someone could have obtained information from the blackout to use at a later time, but apart from your presence, nothing changed for quite a while. So that rules out any reason for someone to cause it unless it was just a mistake. Or it could be we don't know the actual reasons behind it. You look at Columbine with interest, but it seems that she has nothing more to say. The conversation pretty much is over. Well, I think I'm done here. I was training. We have to get we have to take advantage of every moment. Of any moment. And before and before that before that Hilo rubs his hands together, a little nervous. Hanging out in the hall. I don't think I was doing anything special. Just passing the time. The boy lowers his head, distracted. And what do you do when the power went out? At first, I wasn't really sure what happened, since by that time I was in the training ground and, and there's not much light there. But the first person I came across was Violet, who was watering the plants not too far away. As soon as she saw me approach with my sword, she got super defensive and almost burned me alive with a spell. Since I came from the training, I didn't realize how I might look. Violet, she, she was so kind, it's hard to imagine her in any other way. And Richard turns heavy. Neither of you are able to say anything for a while. Afterwards, we split up. I went to the gate to see if anyone snuck in, and I just happened to find you at the east entrance. They were walking slowly up the street and was barely able to catch a glimpse of your silhouette, so I sounded the alarm and shouted that an enemy was here. But immediately afterwards, you passed out. When I saw you up close, I decided to take you inside. You know the rest. Violet took care of you during the raid of chaos and we voted. I guess I never thank you for that. <laughs> I guess I never thank you for that. I'm sorry I appeared so suddenly that way, but you saved my life. Thank you very much, Helio. You are my hero there. Eh? Helio seems to have lost the function to speech, of speech, as if his internal system ran out of a ran into a problem and required a reboot. Helio, I guess I already asked everything I needed anyway. Well, I think I'm done here. This song. On your way up the stairs to the tower key, you hear two voices already in dialogue. Apparently, despite having split up, both you and Fennel chose to visit Tessa at the same time. It is not your aim to eavesdrop once again, but you don't want to interrupt the bad cop in the middle of a performance. Especially when there's a big surprise that awaits. Thank you very much for confirming it. It was thanks for that message that... No, I should be no, I should be thanking you. I always had my doubts about it. Anyway, don't give it too much thought. It doesn't really concern you. Of course it concerns me. Ever since the incident, there's nothing that is irrelevant, whether to me or anyone else. When the world are these two and why aren't they arguing like always? You can't believe your ears. Appreciation and respect, what the heck are those? You strain your ears and tend to keep listening, but a strong gust of wind blows you by the door and causes a lot, a lot of noise that draws the pair's attention to you. Is someone there? Ah! 
Pernell practically jumps three feet in the air at the sight of you. Thistle invites you out of your hiding place and takes control of the situation, clearing his throat to restart the conversation. Think? Did something happen? That's what I wanted to ask. What is going on here, Fennel? What about the interrogation? What interrogation? Well, the power outage, the investigation. Don't tell me what, uh, what you, that's what you're here after the, since the beginning. Good job, Sink. Huh? I finally managed to get the old man to get a thought down so he wouldn't reveal or suspect the thing when I bring it up. And you just had to come in and reveal it all. Great job, 10 out of 10. But the good cop and the bad cop... Wait, were you the you were the good one? Penel pouts, as said in the sheer obviousness of your st statement. I'm sorry, but no one ever would have thought that. Then you just had to ask beforehand. Not everything's ruined. Then do you want me to be the bad cop and... Whatever, forget it. Do what you want. Good grief, not a single thing. Penel leaves the tower, slamming the door behind her. You and Thistle remain silent. Then, do you want me to repeat what she, I just told her, or...? I don't even know why I wanted to do this in the first place. Come on, let's get this over with. Just tell me what you're doing during the power outage. This all seems to enjoy seeing you upset. Trying to make up for the misunderstanding, he follows your orders without complaints. Well, I spent most of the day in the library, and then I took a nap in my room in the afternoon. When the alarm rang, I made it up here. Here? To the tower? That's why I took a nap. I had the night shift watch. I'm usually the one to take it since it's relaxing and I like the view from up here. Very romantic at night. Did you see anything? What happened during the power outage? I can tell you what I saw before the power outage. Since afterwards, the lights went out, I couldn't see a thing. When I arrived here, I took over a shift, who was the one who watched over before me. We talked for a bit and then he left. After that, I saw absolutely no activity outside the castle. What about inside then? Within the walls, everything was as usual. I remember Hiryu all going to the training grounds with his sword, and not too far away, Violet was taking care of the plants. And finally, oh yes, Columbine was on a patrol in the walls, just making her the usual rounds. She likes much presence, but I remember her being there because when the blackout occurred, the very first thing I did was contact her through the internal line. It's an independent line, so it wasn't affected by the blackout. I asked her to stay on watch, just in case. Always so careful with every detail. If I were to leave at the tower, she was the only one who would keep an eye out. I see, but you yourself said you couldn't see anything that night. Was it really necessary? This all stops for a second, scratching his chin. Now that you mention it, you're right. I guess I was just following the protocol and didn't stop to think about it. In any case, I imagine she still might be, have been able to hear something, so that wasn't a total waste of time. I think that's all. Sorry for wasting your time by the double. Don't worry, Fanola will find a way to put the blame on me somehow. You'll see. Don't say that like you're proud of it. Well, I think I'm done here. Now that I'm done, I should pay a visit to Fanola and Rose. So that's all we got. No, we are still missing one testimony. You take a seat on a different sofa within the hall. Once you've all finished sharing your discoveries, Fennel fixes her suspicion-filled gaze on Rose. If you are talking about me, I spent the entire day in my room. And nobody saw you until the power outage. Nobody did, and considering how I'm the one who knows most about castle's technology, that puts me in a really bad spot, doesn't it? On the contrary, I'd say you're the most, you're the most the clear, Rose. The two girls turned their heads to look at you. The biggest hole in this entire investigation is that there was no major consequences after the power outage. Rose is the only one who lost the most, since that was cast upon her electric electronic security devices. I wouldn't go so far as to say doubt. Accidents can happen to anyone, even me, although that may seem impossible at first glance. Ah uh, yeah, I see. I think I get it. Rose is the type of person who wants to hit it off with everyone. More like I naturally hit it off with everyone. I'm inevitable, I tell you. In any case, now that we've gathered every testimony we could get, anyone have any ideas? The half a minute of silence follows says it all. 
boring. They told us both the same things. Not a single contradiction. You're the one with the holy idea of splitting up. I was expecting a little more substance, but here we don't have a motive, murder, nothing. You think this is a mystery novel or something? You would have loved that, wouldn't you? I don't think anyone really want to, wants to see themselves involved in something like that in real life. Rose stays on the flight lines, despite how she usually enjoys being the center of attention. Maybe that is why you lost your memories. What are you talking about? Come on, Sink, let's be serious. I understand you want to prove your innocence, but you really have to think that your arrival in the power edge had nothing to do with each other. The evidence makes it hard to see, considering where they found me and the condition I was in at the time. Oh? A surprise rose interferes with the raise of her hand, clearly excited. This. Sink, you still don't remember anything from before your arrival, right? You nod, gulping expectantly. Then... You lean forward from the edge of your seat, clenching your fists. No, nothing. I have no idea. Pretty sure it was an accident. You almost fall to the floor as the pension pops like a bubble. Jeez, are you trying to win wind us up or something? No, no. I was just thinking it over, but I haven't come to any conclusions. There's no motive, like you just mentioned before. Without that, it's not a crime, but an accident. What a joke. At least we got to kill some time, so thanks, I guess. You're welcome. Fennel stands up, but before she leaves the room, she approaches her seat and whispers in your ear. And about what you saw when I was talking with Thistle, that never happened, alright? You gesture to indicate your lips were sealed. Fennel smiles before bidding farewell and departing. There's just the two of you now. Before you leave as well, Rose has one more thing to say. Fennel seems quite sincere and in that harsh demeanor, I mean. If you say so. I wish I was mistaken about her sincerity. Sincerity? Especially considering what she said about there being no one else left. Yeah, it's not looking very hopeful. Hope? That's the word. Maybe that's the issue. Anything you want to share, Rose? Me? No. Rose leans back to lay on the sofa, crossing her arms. It's just that, in the end, that's what we're always doing. Having hope. Yeah, ah, yes. I guess so. Although Rose seems worried for you, she's unable to look at you in the eye. She says nothing more, only letting out a muted loud sigh. Her nurse's face told me everything. I need to know about her. Anyway, I think that's the end of today's episode. They're saying a lot of confusing things that I don't understand. I'm not smart enough for any of this. I mean, I thought the game to have like the funny dialogue. <laughs> I'm just a ditzy, dumb girl who don't understand any philosophy. Philosophy, what? 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 I don't understand any of this. I mean, I get what they're trying to mean, uh, what they mean, but like, I like to see the world as it is, simply as it is. I don't like to overcomplicate things because, well, it's not worth my time and energy. If I did, I would just end up unhappy. Well, I already am. Kind of, because I overthink about expectations, but that's besides the point. Well, I would think that these people would be happier just think not thinking about the world in such in in that the way that they do. Like it's so complicated. Why do they have to think like that? Anyway, like if you like, dislike if you dislike, subscribe for more content like this, I do a lot of visual novels, and if you'd like, you can, you can suggest some games for me to play. It can be any games, really, as long as they don't require that much skill. As you can see from my previous episodes, I do not have that much skill in gaming. I, <laughs> I'm just not good at gaming. So... Comment down, also comment down below what you think of this episode, what you think of Fennel, like what 
when you think of what she thought of photographs, do you believe what she says? I mean, you simply want to take a picture and she overcomplicates it. What do you think of that? Well, her experience is different from ours. So what what do I have to say about what? I can't say much about that because different experiences, different people, different experiences. I think that's all. Thank you for watching and have a good day.